Hello and welcome to my channel. Today we'll give some updates on my color analyzer and the problems what I have with the current setup and try to fix some of them. As you saw in the previous videos, I switched back and forward between two sensors and sometimes I find more solutions for the one and more problems in the second one. One sensor is more of a spectrometer and the second one is RGB and white color sensor. I also rewrite some scripts to make this board works and now it's just simple comments and calling the functions to call up with the numbers of the sensor response. At the moment it requires simple logic, so I make few corrections already, so the first correction, which was not working before, it's a correction for exposure. Each time when you change the filters you actually change exposure also. And now the first step I recalibrate again. And now I also can calibrate the correction for each channel to the exposure value, so the make each channel relative to exposure and basically align all the channels in the signal. For now procedure looks like this, so I adjust the gain, I close the filters, calibrate the minimum value, so basically all the filters closed. And from that I know the dynamic range of the full setup. So the first test, what I want to show, it's stop down with the aperture on the lens. I get the correction value for fully opened aperture on f4 and from there I will stop down the aperture and I want to see exactly the same change in each channel. And in a perfect world I want to see the split in half in the dynamic range, so basically if I have 30,000 response I want to see 15,000 if I stop down one stop and unfortunately as you can see even from these numbers it's not linear as I want to see it it's not so dramatic problem and I think in future it will not create a huge problem but for sure we need to address it and it's not really good for linear calibration of each filter set and the last point before we make a discussion if you take a corrections for each channel and starting for example from fully closed filters or fully open filters and shift the filters and you recalculate all the channels to the red so basically divide it to the value of the red and put it in percentage and you see this percentage on the left screen there you can see that the all channels can be moved separately so if you rotate the cyan channel it's actually moving symmetrically blue and red channel from left to right in these columns it's actually red channel green channel and blue channel so i can say the last problem what i need to fight off it's crosstalk between the channels but this one we will discuss later in the diagrams i split the project in the two major parts and this is our first sensor and here as you can see this is our progress from the previous videos and I want to discuss why I actually switch back. And the first thing after experiments, what we find out, we have a three frequencies, and I cross talk these frequencies and cross check with the second sensor and find out we actually can sense all of them. And it's not perfect, yes, but it will work. And the secondly, I found that I need some stable response. And by stable response, I mean I should not have any crosstalk with the infrared channel. And this is what I found out uh, reading the data sheet for the sensor that the both first two channels, which we kind of are most struggling with, also have this crosstalk with the huge band of the infrared channel. So this sensor doesn't really have any type of infrared filtration and it means in our photo enlarger it will be a huge problem because we're not using cold LEDs, we're using our halogen lamp which has a massive spike here and it actually goes up to infrared. Yes, it has a filter, but it's not filtering all the signal what we want. So it means if you compare this spectrum and if you go to our spectrum on this sensor you can see here we don't really have any kind of a significant response in range of the infrared so it's kind of a minor and all of the deviations there also will be minor 
and most importantly all of the channels have a crosstalk there so they all kind of not perfect and all of them will have a little bit of the problems with the infrared so the filter is not perfect but in the same time as you can see here we have a clear channel which is also covering only all three channels and it's not covering the this spectrum so on the second sensor i have a problem with the clear channel i cannot really correlate my three sensitive channels to the clear channel because it's not overall sum of the exposure what i have it's also the sum of the infrared channel so the peak there is actually somewhere in the middle of 750 nanometers so it means my cyan channel will influence more our signal than the rest of the channels so I cannot use it as a reference data because it's shake too much and create a lot of significant problems. For now, we just need to check if I need to correct this crosstalk between all of these channels. Because as you see here, the filters actually cross relate to each other. And the problem is you don't really have option to selectively check each filter and basically uh, without cross correspondence with the rest of the filters so it doesn't meant to work like this it meant to work as a ratio between all of these three channels so it should be calibrated as a ratio as i calibrated before but in the same time use this response as rgb values and rgb ratio between all the channels and in this case you don't really care about the crosstalk because crosstalk kind of a cancel each other because you also shift this channel and this channel in the same time and the ratio actually will keep the same so from previous settings these three plots at the moment they are not really significant and uh, one of the problems with these plots what i make and this problem is actually changing of the exposure on these three plots i'm not taking into account any type of exposure change with the filter change so and this is why i don't have any type of separation between of the channels and this is was like huge mistake in uh, assumptions what i make on this particular sensor results what i show you a minute ago in the video evaluates in this plot we have uh, all channels what the sensor can measure so it's blue green red and transparency channel so this is all channels what you have in the sensor and you can see this all channels in this plot and this is blue green red and clear channel and all of them corresponds to this plot and i expect them to be ideal so it means if i split my light in half I expecting drop twice in the ADC value so the value what I have in the sensor unfortunately this is not the case for all of the channels but in the same time it's not the case for all of the channels in exactly the same way which is good and I plot them here against the ideal line so if the sensor have a perfect linear response it will have ideal response flat on this line but as you can see uh, close to zero it's actually go back but in the middle below the 5000 counts it actually deviates back and have a different strange curve but higher than the 5000 you have almost flat line so you just need a little bit small correction value to put it straight back so i think i can measure it and i think i can actually avoid any problems with this type of plots and if we check crosstalk again with this particular settings yes i have some crosstalk between of the channels but i don't think it's a huge problem and i also don't really think it will create any problems if we're using ratio between the channels and not fully ratio value at least for the first prototype it will be really good to have a stable point for all of the free channels and not really value for the wheel what you have on the enlarger in ideal case scenario yes i want to calibrate my enlarger and i want to have some kind of a device which i start prototyping which you insert instead of your lens and you have a hole and this is integrated in sphere which you can measure the light off and it will be always constant and in future for example if i want to implement my own enlarger i will have the same device inside the body of the enlarger which can measure the color constantly and you will get the automatic setting or automatic assumption of the settings what you will put in the enlarger about this device we will talk in the next videos but for now i just want to say yes i can measure 
the channels and yes they kind of works and yes in principle you can already kind of use it but the biggest problem what i want to solve in future it's a neutral point on the prints and if it's repeatable in technical stuff in a dark room or i have great idea that you can actually use the gray point or middle value from your scan to basically evaluate your prints so you can transfer your scan and take the values from the scan or just digital picture what you digitized before and use it as a reference value to start printing in a dark room and this is what i describe as multi-dimensional dark room if your system is integrated you can do a lot of stuff and you can use a lot of sources to make your work easier more precise or more creative in the same time so at the moment the logic in the processing works like this so i take a gain i basically correct the coefficients of for each channels apply coefficients divide by exposure and kind of divide by the red channel and this is how i get these three values so on a fully open filters i have 100 100 100 so you can think as a percents of the channels and if you dialing the cyan channel your cyan anyway so your red channel is anyway 100 percent but your both channels go up and they not really perfectly symmetrical but as you can see they close and if you close magenta channel you have green which is going down to 41 percent and minus 3.5 percent on the blue channel and if you're closing yellow channel you have 57 percent as a fully closed blue or yellow channel so blue color or yellow channel and your green doesn't really shake a lot only a little bit but it's all not relative to the range so we kind of need to correct it and check if we can do something with these values if you find this video interesting you can always support me on my coffee website or through the youtube in the next video we will print in a dark room so stay tuned and thank you for watching and see you in the next videos